Um, well, I started TNT Youth Community Foundation because I saw a need. Uh, a lot of times when you meet the young person, you're not really meeting them. You're meeting the image that they're projecting. My drama is very strong, but the visual images that we see on a daily basis as African Americans, it needed to be corrected and changed. And Up around somebody that gets a kick out of robbing somebody or a kick out of killing somebody. So, no lady, you gonna get a kick out of it too. And um, your life's not supposed to be bad, it's supposed to be actually good. Students in that program learn about Africa. They learn about the Underground Railroad. They learn about Jim Crow. They learn about civil rights. Plus, you learn how to produce movies. Freedom Summer from your favorite rapper, favorite rapper, Karen Scott. <laughs> The poem I'll be reading is called Black Hat. Black, they label me black. But what is that? What is black? Is it what they show on TV? Because that's not the way I act. Better to 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 create our new image versus I mean, who, who better to create our new image than our own children? Uh, Miss uh, Fortune Gibson, what brings you out to the cemetery today? Well, um, I heard about it from a constituent of Facebook We Share group, and I was very excited to learn the history of the graveyard as well as share it with the rest of the community or cyberspace. <laughs> Rest in peace, Bill. Wake County lists the owner of this cemetery as Oberlin Cemetery, containing 2.93 acres. Although the cemetery appears abandoned, there have been burials as recent as 2002. This African American cemetery has fallen into disrepair with many unmarked and sunken graves. Many headstones have been tipped and are broken. And who are some of the organizations present today? Well, first, my organization is One Village, One World, Consultant Incorporated, and uh, my foundation is One Vision, One Destiny on the Brotherhood and Sisterhood CDC. I'm out here with my man, Vandal P, with Vandal Productions, um, and then we have the Black Business Professional Chain Rights and Passes Program from Durham. They came over the Cornell West Academy, and I also want to shout out Voices Therapeutic Services, who's one of the sponsors for the organization. We're out here to recognize one of the oldest African sites in uh, Raleigh, this is an old uh, historic Oakland village. Um, it was started back in the 1700s by an ex-slave, and uh, what we have behind us is the Overland Village Cemetery, or the Turner Point Cemetery. Um, it's not recognized as a historic site, but we feel that it should be. Um, it's, it's dealt with years of neglect, so we got uh, some of the community together to come out and clean it up. Overgrown and carpeted with fallen leaves, large trees shading the random headstones, it is an anomaly in this busy neighborhood. I did a, I did a, short, a bunch of short films last year entitled Kind of African American History Exposed, and I discovered Open the Cemetery. So we shot it last year, so this year when we came back out, just to revisit the cemetery and see if anybody came and cleaned it up, they haven't done it. So what we did, I, um, I teamed up with the Keeper Bird with uh, Rites of Passage, 
and uh, we organized this event and got everybody out here to kind of clean up, get back to the community. And we became best friends. Our mothers met each other. People fought for us, and now we need to fight for them. Um, I didn't know anything about the history of this area, but when I found out, I thought there was nothing else we could be doing today to come to this. Uh, when I found out this is the oldest black cemetery in Raleigh, um, I had to get my young men in my program out here to do a little bit of work. Okay, tell me more about the cemetery is a relic of a proud past when Overland Village was home to a flourishing African American community founded after the Civil War. New slang, New Jersey got jumped a couple times, fists flying in the flurry. It's more to the story than what you hear on the track. I wish the doc could fit it all in a rap. One of the biggest slave owners that in the South period was a man by the name of Duncan Cameron. Duncan Cameron owned uh, a large number of slaves in the South. And one of the one of his slaves uh, was one of his slaves was named James E. Harris. James E. Harris, after he was uh, after the slavery was amended, he went to Oberlin College, Oberlin University, which is in Ohio. After he got his degree, he came back to help his community. So he started one of the very first African American communities in Raleigh, North Carolina. But the funny thing about it, this whole area of town, section of town, is known as Oberlin Village. But everyone calls it Cameron Village. And what a lot of people don't know, in 1962, 67, something like that, they built Cameron Village on the plantation that was owned by Duncan Cameron. So any of y'all black folks that go to Cameron Village and y'all go shop and spend your money, it's almost like a Jew, a Jewish person going to uh, a shopping center or shopping that's named after Adolf Hitler. The area is now thought of as Cameron Village, which is actually the name of a nearby shopping center. Over the years, it has changed into a congested part of Raleigh with shopping centers, multiple businesses, and condominiums surrounding the overwhelming old cemetery. When you think about our culture and our history, we always honor our, our, our ancestors. So we have one of the oldest cemeteries in Raleigh. Um, it has uh, graves dating back to the 1700s. It also has war veterans from every war that we've been in starting in the Spanish-American History War. Since we're not recognized by the city or the county or the historic uh, foundation of the city, I think it's important that we come out and uh, we take care of it ourselves. When I was young, I was running, wild like the West, mildly depressed, juke cologne and cigarettes, token on the best, sipping on the worst after school, Mary P was down to kick a verse, but I got to get my mind right past the liquor first, Cisco, night train, and that Thunderbird, chunky juice, had this young punk loose, if you were me back then, this is what I tell you, focus on your studies, instead of smoking with your buddies, playing hope and dope for money. I learned how to volunteer my time. We, we talked to them about their futures, um, them being accountable, um, about them serving others. We talked to them about, um, you know, not just becoming another successful black man who will, you know, move to Wakefield and when he gets home, he puts the garage down. We don't, we don't need any more of them. We, we need young men who, yeah, go be successful, be a lawyer, you can make all the money in the world, but serve other people. Because Dr. West is all about, about love and service, and that's why we named the program after Doc, can you tell me what you learned today? Breaking your pile. Yeah. Breaking is tiring. Okay, do you do you realize uh, why did you have to break today? Uh, I didn't really know this was going on until my dad called. So, yeah. And he just came and snatched out the bed and made you break somebody's leaves. No, he called me. I wanted to do it. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do it. Okay. Can you tell me what you learned today? Uh, I learned that this is the first American 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 American. There's some historic spots in Raleigh that 
that people don't know about. And, and this no, is one you guys have to they, wait. I'm I mean, not done. Probably the one. We're not done. You know, this area was given to the slaves after slavery ended. And, and, but now this area doesn't belong to us anymore. You know, from Wade Avenue over to Cameron Village, it was all black owned. Um, but I don't know how many black folks still live over here. And for this cemetery to be here and to be in the shape that it's in, um, that's not something that we should allow to happen. So this may be something that, that these boys take on for the long haul, um, being an advocate for this for this this, this area. As a leader in all of us, I used to tell my brothers under me to do the right thing. Don't slang, but I was slanging. I would tell them, don't smoke pub, but my eyes would be bloodshot. You know what I'm saying? I would tell them, y'all need to put them cancer sticks down right as I'm lighting mine. You know? So in essence, I was a hypocrite. But I know something now that I didn't know then. Real men lead by example, homie. And I still fall short. But Christ was the only one. And can you tell me why it's important to, so to spend a Saturday them, um, in a place them. where you're giving to others? I'm pointing to somebody well, because greater. we all foremost, we'll all need somebody to give to us at some point, I'm sure. You know, the community, the world is a lot more connected, not just in digital, but overall, that people understand. So, um, when I saw some of the dates that they shared so on the graves, they were like, come on, 1800? We don't know anything about this, then you just... Home school preschool. 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 Home